so let's go ahead and get started and talk about our topic for the day. We're going to be talking about sea turtles. So sea turtles were one of my favorite things in the ocean. Um, I'll even tell you which one of my favorite sea turtle species is. So I'm very excited for this lesson. What is a turtle? So guys, what is a turtle? Is it a mammal, a reptile, an amphibian, or a fish? I'll go ahead and tell you that turtles are reptiles. So a sea turtle is a reptile. They are related to alligators and crocodiles, lizards, tortoises. Those are all reptiles. This tile is cold-blooded, so it relies on the outside temperature for its own body. Um, that's why you see a lot of reptiles out sunning themselves. Um, down here we have a lot of iguanas. Iguanas are like big, big lizards, pretty much. They look like little mini dinosaurs. Um, but you'll see them just hanging out in the sun. In fact, when it got really cold here in about, I think, January, they actually posted an advisory to be aware of falling iguanas because it was so cold that the iguanas were going to be very, very cold and just fall out of trees that they were hanging out in. So the reptiles need to rely on the sunlight and the temperature in the surrounding environment to keep their body regulated. If it gets too cold, they can't move. So they're cold-blooded. Reptiles also have scaly skin, and they breathe air. So guys, even though a turtle lives in the ocean, it has to breathe air. Um, so it'll come up periodically to breathe the, that air. So let's briefly talk about the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. So guys, they are both different types of animals. Um, can a tortoise swim? So remember we have turtles and tortoises. Do you think a tortoise can swim? Yes or no? Guys, so tortoises cannot swim. So let's go ahead and talk about the differences. So turtles, they do well in water. You're mostly gonna find them near or in the water. They have a flatter shell. That shell on a turtle or a tortoise is called a carapace. So go ahead and say carapace out loud. That carapace is actually the shell. So when I say that word carapace, it's talking about the shell. So turtles have a flatter carapace. They usually have webbed feet with claws or flippers. They are omnivores. So if you guys remember that from our first lesson, that means they eat both plants and meat. And they can live for about 20 to 40 years. So you know in Finding Nemo how Crush says he's like over 100. That's not exactly accurate. Sea turtles don't live that long. So turtles will live about 20 to 40 years. Your tortoises, however, can live between 80 to 150 years old. I'm sure you guys have heard about the, Galap the tortoises in the Galapagos. Um, there's a lot of tortoises that live much longer than humans. Um, so tortoises live longer than turtles, and tortoises cannot swim. So their legs look more like an elephant leg, um, so they're very short and wide and stocky, and their legs are not built for swimming. So tortoises cannot swim, they are going to be found on land. They have a larger carapace or dome-like shell. And they are herbivores, so they eat plants. Um, so guys, a lot of us, myself included, when we see a turtle or a tortoise crossing the road, we'll usually pull, save them, put them somewhere. Um, that's totally great. Obviously, make sure that you're in a safe area, there's no cars coming. But I do want to really make a point of when you guys do ever try to save one of those animals, please don't put it in the water. Um, if you're unsure if it's a turtle or a tortoise, put it maybe near the water. If it's a turtle, it'll get there. Um, but if you save a tortoise and you don't realize it's a tortoise, and then you put it in the water, you're actually going to end up killing it. And we don't want to do that. So if you guys ever save a turtle or a tortoise, never ever put it in the water. Put it next to the water and that way it can figure out where it wants to be. So that's a really important thing. Remember, tortoises cannot swim. All right, so moving on. So sea turtles do a really cool thing and they have what we call natal homing. All that means is that when a sea turtle is born, it will actually come back to that same beach to lay its, its own eggs. So say a BC turtle was born on a beach here in Key West. When she is an adult, she's ready to lay her own eggs. She will actually come back to that same exact beach to lay her own eggs. So mama sea turtles go lay their eggs at the beach they were born at. 
So it was very cool. We don't exactly know how they know where to find that beach. Um, they have some way of understanding Earth's uh, magnetic field. So we think they use that knowledge to be able to navigate to their birth beach. Again, it's still kind of a mystery to scientists. Um, and these sea turtles not only want a that beach that is close to where they were born at, but they want a nice clean beach. So a lot of times sea turtles won't nest if there's other stuff on the beach, like beach chairs or shovels and sand castles. They'll actually go back in the water and try again the next day. So when a sea turtle comes onto the beach, you can actually figure out what kind of sea turtle it is based on their tracks. So there's a lot of people that will walk the beaches in the morning to look for the nest, and then they'll actually be able to figure out what kind of nest it is based on the tracks. Um, so the loggerhead seal, I want everyone to do this. So this is actually how a loggerhead sea turtle will climb up onto the beach, one flipper at a time. So you can look at their tracks in the sand, kind of looks like tire tracks, and you'll see if it alternates flippers, it's a loggerhead. Now the green sea turtle comes up like this. So everyone kind of do this, kind of like the breaststroke. Um, the green sea turtle comes up two flippers at a time. Um, the leatherback comes up both flippers at a time, but the leatherback tracks are going to be huge. Um, and then the other sea turtles will have smaller tracks, but usually, you know, it's sometimes people get the loggerhead and green sea turtle confused. And a really good way to know is just by looking at the tracks. And the loggerhead is alternating one, two, and the green is just like this. So when that mama sea turtle comes onto the beach, she creates what we call a body pit. So she'll actually spend hours flinging the sand to either side and making this big hole that's the size of its body. And then she'll use her bottom flippers to start digging out a nest. And the nest is going to be kind of like this. So it kind of looks like a cylinder in the sand. Once she creates a big enough little area for her eggs, she'll begin to lay her eggs. And guys, sea turtles lay on average 110 eggs per nest. So sea turtles lay a lot of eggs um, in every single nest. When that mama is done laying her eggs, she'll cover up the eggs and she'll go back into the ocean. And then uh, beach monitors, volunteers will go the next morning they'll find out where that nest is and they'll mark it off. So if you guys have ever been to a beach, um, if you live in Florida, we are actually just getting into sea turtle nesting season. Um, you're going to start seeing either yellow stakes with some ribbon. You're going to see something to let people know that there's baby sea turtle eggs in here. Um, that's very important so that way people don't step on that area. People don't try to dig up um, when they're building sand castles or digging holes in the beach. Uh, animals won't dig it up either or people won't set their beach chairs on it. So it's very important that we have those nests marked. Now another cool thing about the sea turtles is when they're in the nest, the temperature of that nest will actually decide what gender that sea turtle turns. So it's kind of crazy. But the warmer the nest, the more likely you are to have girl sea turtle, baby girl sea turtles. The colder the nest, the more likely you are to have boy sea turtles hatch. So guys, colder sand equals boy sea turtles, warmer sand equals girl sea turtles. Um, that's very, very interesting and it's supposed to happen very naturally. So the eggs on the outside are cooled off by the sand, so they're boys, and the eggs on the center are warmed up um, by the other eggs, so they become female. So usually you'd have a good ratio of male to female. However, with climate change and everything just getting a lot hotter, we're actually getting a lot more girl sea turtles, which seems kind of cool. Yeah, girl power. But think about it. If all we have are girl sea turtles, we're not going to have boy sea turtles, which means no babies. And that is not good. All right, guys. So once those sea turtles hatch, they will go out to the sea, um, and they spend what we call the lost years. So. At this point, when the baby sea, sea turtles go into the ocean, they go out and, and find what we call sargasm seaweed. So it's a type of seaweed. Um, it's like a light colored brown, and it comes in big, what we call rafts or patches that float on top of the water. 
the baby sea turtles will actually go out to that seaweed and hide in there for protection and for food. There's going to be little baby fish that they can eat in there too. So they'll go out there and they spend a long time out there out at sea and we don't exactly know what these sea turtles do when they're out there. They can spend seven to ten years out there during the lost years. Um, it's hard for scientists to know exactly what they do because it's hard to put a tracker on a baby sea turtle on a sea turtle that is growing really quickly that, that tracker won't be able to stay on. So we don't exactly know what they do. That's why we call it the lost years. Um, unfortunately, only one in every 1,000 sea turtles will make it to becoming an adult. So again, guys, for every 1,000 sea turtles, only one will actually survive. So for every 1,000 eggs, only one sea turtle will make it to becoming an adult. It's a very, very hard life for a baby sea turtle. When they're in the nest, um, there could be issues with the eggs they may not hatch. People could actually take the eggs. In a lot of areas, people will actually poach the eggs and take the eggs, which is illegal in many places as well. Um, dogs will dig up the nest. People will stand on it. Um, a lot of things, maybe the tide would come in and wash out all those eggs. So that's an issue. Once they hatch, another big problem is just getting to the water. So there's a lot of birds, raccoons, things, crabs that are hunting them when they're trying to get to the ocean. Also, sea turtles will try to follow light. So ideally, they follow the moonlight. The mamas and the babies, when they are ready to go to the ocean, they follow the reflection of the moon on the water. Um, if you live near a beach, uh, you know that you're supposed to turn your lights off. Um, if someone maybe lives by a beach, maybe right across the street, and they have bright lights on, those sea turtles will actually get confused and go into the road instead of the ocean. And that's a huge issue. So a lot of areas will have darker red or, or lights um, for street lights instead so that the sea turtles will go to the ocean. Um, but that's a very big issue. Actually down here a few years ago, we had a mother sea turtle end up in the middle of the road because she got what we call disoriented. So if you guys live near the water, uh, make sure you turn off those lights at, at night. Now guys, another question I get is how long can sea turtles be underwater? Sea turtles can be underwater for four to seven hours. Um, so that's a very, very long time. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about our different species of sea turtles. There are seven species throughout the world. Um, we usually find about five of them here um, in Florida and in North America, but I will talk about all seven. And I'm gonna talk about one of our dinosaur turtles. So the first one is what we call the Archelon. So the Archelon was our dinosaur turtle. It does not exist anymore, it is extinct. So again, guys, if a species is extinct, no longer exists. So the Archelon is gone. It existed probably around the same time as a Megalodon. It was 15 feet long, so that's very, very big. And it could be almost 5,000 pounds and had a leathery, leather-like carapace shell. So if you guys know what leather is, like a couch or your car seat, its shell or carapace was like that. So very flexible. And it ate crabs, crustaceans. So again, guys, the Archelon, that was a 15-foot long sea turtle. Uh, we don't have those anymore. But let's start talking about sea turtles that we do have. So the first one is the Kemp's Ridley. So I'll show you guys a photo. Let's hopefully it'll work. There you go. All right, the Kemp's Ridley right here is named that because a man named uh, Richard Kemp actually discovered it. So you guys, if you discover a brand new species of anything, you actually get to name it whatever you want. So Richard Kemp named it after himself. Um, but he discovered the Kemp's Ridley actually near the Keys, and he got to name it. Now, the Kemp's Ridley is the smallest of the sea turtles. It's very endangered. Um, many people say it's the most endangered species of sea turtle that we have. It eats shellfish and jellyfish, and it's often called the ghost turtle. So if you guys saw that photo, you saw that it was a very pale color. Um, they're actually born. Uh, darker with uh, kind of a black carapace. As they grow up, 
they lose a lot of that color and turn a very ghostish kind of color, very pale, very light. So we call them the ghost turtle. They live in shallow, muddy areas and they are critically endangered. Um, so guys, if you live more up north, um, you actually have a lot of Kemp's Ridley's and they often get cold stunned, which means that when the water gets too cold, they can't move. So a lot of times the sea turtle hospitals on the east coast will have to rescue and rehabilitate those Kemp's Ridley's. All right, so we're gonna talk about the green sea turtle next. I'm gonna put up a new poll. So go ahead and answer the next question. When did the green sea turtle get its name? Is it because of what it eats or what it looks like? All right, so guys, this is what the green sea turtle looks like. The green sea turtle got its name because of what it eats. So the green sea turtle eats turtle grass. Uh, we learned about that in our seagrass lesson. And it eats so much seagrass that its inside fat and muscle actually turns a little green. So if you guys ever eaten a lot of carrots, um, you've noticed that your fingers might turn a little orange. Um, also flamingo, flamingos are pink. They turn because of the shrimp that they eat. The green, green turtle's inside fat and muscle turns green, but its outside really isn't that green at all. As you saw, it's kind of more of a brownish color. So the green sea turtle on the outside really isn't that green, it's what's on the inside. Uh, so the green sea turtle is a medium to large size. It eats mostly seagrass, so you're going to find it in seagrass beds. And historically, we actually used to hunt green sea turtles and turn them into turtle soup. Um, so that was a big thing here in the Keys a long time ago. Um, but we don't do that anymore uh, in the United States. Uh, it's not very good practice. All right, the next one is the loggerhead sea turtle. So the loggerhead is my favorite species of sea turtle. Loghead, I'll show you a photo of that one. So the loggerhead is called the loggerhead because it has a very, very big head. Let's see, there we go. Good, so the loggerhead has a very, very big head. As you can see, it's a little bit darker than your green sea turtle is. And the reason it's called the loggerhead is because back in the day when sailors were exploring the world, they would see these floating sea turtles and that darker color, they looked like a log. So sailors just started calling them loggerheads and that name stuck. Um, they used those big, big jaws and that's part of their head to eat a lot of harder things like shellfish. So they'll eat a lot of conch shells, crabs, lobsters. So your loggerheads have big heads, big, strong, powerful jaws um, to be able to crush different animals. They live in more coastal areas. They live in a lot of pat reefs. Um, so if you are ever on a boat and you see a sea turtle, a good way to know if it's a green or a loggerhead is by looking at the head. If it's got a smaller head, it's a green. If it's got a bigger head, it's a loggerhead. All right, the next one is the hawksbill. The hawksbill is a really pretty turtle. It's a smaller um, turtle. And it looks like this. Here you go. So the hawksbill looks like this. Um, Trying to see if I can make that. Eh, there we go. So the hawksbill looks like this. It's called that. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, but if you look at the front of its face, it's got a hawk like beak. So if you guys know what a hawk is, a hawk is a type of bird, and it has a beak like mouth um, to resemble a bird. And also, guys, another big difference with the hawksbill is if you kind of see its shell, it's more pointed. So you guys can see the carapace. It's very pointy towards the ends, and the scoots, which are the panels or the puzzle pieces on top, actually go over each other. So the scoots are the little puzzle pieces on top of the carapace, and the hawksbills kind of goes like this. They overlap. On the other sea turtles, they fit together like a puzzle, but theirs go on top, and the hawksbill has a more pointed carapace shell. So again, guys, the hawksbill is named that because it has a hawk-like beak, and it uses that beak to rip into things like sponges, anemones, squid, and shrimp. They usually live in the coral reefs. And so you'll usually find hawksbills at a coral reef. Um, in fact, hawksbills have been found to pick a coral reef and make it their own, and that's kind of where they stay. So they'll pick a little spot and kind of hang out there. All right, the next one is the leatherback. So the leatherback is a very exciting one. 
That's what it looks like. The leather back is named this because it has a leather-like carapace shell back. So it's very flexible. It can kind of move. And remember, leather, think of a car seat or a couch or something like that. So the reason the leather bag has that more flexible carapace is because they can dive to 3,000 feet deep. So the leather bag is the deepest diving sea turtle. And because it can dive so deep, it has that soft shell so its lungs can expand and get smaller um, to help it dive that deep. The leather bag is the largest sea turtle that we have now. It can be over 1,000 pounds. And they live in the open ocean. Now, even though it's the biggest sea turtle, its diet is mostly jellyfish. So the leatherback mostly eats just jellyfish. All right, guys. Um, little side note, I forgot to mention this worksheet here. Um, but this worksheet you can work on after we're done. You can work on it now, whatever. Um, I've already talked about a few of these. All that it does is it says um, so far. species and dive up to 3,000 feet deep. Um, so that one right there, make your guess. We just talked about it. Alrighty. So while you guys are working on that, let's talk about another sea turtle. So we have um, the olive ridley. So the olive ridley is the next species of sea turtle. And this is what it looks like. All right, kind of hard to see. I'm sorry, guys. I don't have a color printer, so it's hard for me to print out photos. But the Olive Ridley looks like this. Um, so it is kind of similar to a Kemp's Ridley. It's named this because of its olive color. Um, it's olive color. And guys, the Olive Ridley lives mostly in the Pacific Ocean. Um, we do have a few of them that will be found in the Atlantic. So a few of the sea turtle hospitals actually have um, olive ridleys in their centers um, but we'll mostly find them in the pacific ocean it's not common for us to, or in the southern hemisphere it's not common for us in the keys to see an olive ridley um, one really cool thing about the ridley species especially the olive ridley is they actually nest once a year in a big group so hundreds of these olive ridleys will gather onto one beach and nest we call that an aribata and that is you'll literally see hundreds of sea turtles on the beach and they're all nesting at one time it's very very cool it happens in uh, Costa Rica it's very common there as well now they feed on jellyfish snails and crabs and again they're mostly in the Pacific or this and the southern hemisphere so we don't really have them a lot here in the Keys or Florida, um, but you might see them every now and then all right, final sea turtle that we have today to learn about is the Australian flatback. Let me see where I can get this. There you go. All right, it'll adjust, I think. So the Australian flatback is called this because one, it uh, sorry, one it lives in Australia, um, and there we go. That's a little bit better, I guess. Um, and it's got a flatter carapace. Shell. So the Australian flatback has a flatter shell and it is pretty much only found in Australia. Now the Australian flatback we don't know a lot about but we do know that it doesn't lay a lot of eggs so it lays about 50 eggs per nest um, and the hatchlings are actually bigger than your other sea turtles so their hatchlings come out of the eggs a little bit bigger than our other species would. They eat a lot of sea cucumbers, jellies, and soft corals. They live near Australia, and they're actually considered data deficient. So we don't have enough data or information on them to know whether they are endangered or if they're not. Um, so we don't have a lot of information about them quite yet. So to do a little review, your green sea turtles eat seagrass, your hawksbills will eat more sponges, your kemps, um, and your will eat more jellyfish and your loggerhead will eat the harder things like crabs and crustaceans and conch shells. All right guys so just on this remember I mentioned all the points on here 
You've got, I'm only found in Australia. I eat so much seagrass, my inside fat turns green. I am the largest sea turtle species and can dive to 3,000 feet deep. I have a very large head and my jaws can crush hard things. Once a year, I nest in a large group called an arribada. I am named this because of my bird-like beak and I am often called the ghost turtle. So go ahead and get your guesses on that. While we talk about a few threats to sea turtles. So um, there are a lot of issues that sea turtles have to face. Why don't you guys go ahead and post in the comments what you think a threat to sea turtles is. So go ahead and write in the comments something you think sea turtles have to deal with, something that might hurt them. Um, so we know that several of our species eat jellyfish. Um, and there is one thing that people use a lot that can look like a jellyfish in the water, and that's a plastic bag. Um, plastic bags, people use them a lot. Grocery stores are very, very common. And unfortunately, those things are very lightweight. They fly out of dump trucks, they fly out of trash cans, people throw them out the window. I've seen that a lot, unfortunately. Um, and those plastic bags, and when they end up in the ocean, a turtle will actually mistake it for jellyfish. They look very similar and then they'll eat it. And when that sea turtle eats that plastic, it's very bad for them. It could hurt them. It can cause them to starve. Um, sea turtles, our stomachs not process plastic. Plastic just builds up in the stomachs of these animals. So seabirds, all these animals that I'm about, the plastic doesn't just wait, it stays in their stomach. It fills up over time until they can't eat anything else and they starve to death. Um, so plastic is a big problem. I'm sure a lot of you have seen the video of the sea turtle and the straw. Um, although that was awful and very hard to watch, it did actually do a lot of good. So that sea turtle's fine. They pulled the straw out of it. But, you know, that sea turtle helped make the whole movement of skipping the straw. And that's a big thing. Um, a lot of people don't exactly understand why we should skip the straw, but straws are a very common thing found during shoreline cleanups. They're actually in the top 10 marine debris items found. I think last year or the year before, they were the third most popular thing found during cleanups. They're very lightweight, they can't be recycled, and you don't need a straw, all right? You guys can get a reusable straw or don't use a straw. So that is a very, very um, important thing to note, and there's been a lot of skip the straw campaigns. Down here in Key West, we actually passed an ordinance saying that businesses cannot give out plastic straws. So that's a huge step in the right direction. Um, another issue that sea turtles face is just getting hunted for other items. So the hawksbill has very, very pretty carapace shell scoots, and the hawksbill actually gets hunted a lot for its scoots. They remove those little puzzle-like pieces and they'll turn it into jewelry. Um, so we hear the term tortoise shell. That's usually from a hawksbill. So definitely be aware of that. You also have sea turtle that will get very sick. There's one very, very common thing that we have down here called fibropapillomatosis. They also call it FP. A lot of our green sea turtles will actually get this disease. And what it does is it actually creates cauliflower-like bumps and tumors on their body. And it can get so bad that you can no longer swim it can grow over their eyes. So if a sea turtle is found with that fibropapillomatosis tumor, they'll actually go to the hospital, get it removed, and they actually have to stay in the hospital for about a year um, to fully recover. And that those tumors are actually caused by poor water quality. Um, there's a lot of gross stuff in our waters, a lot of diseases, a lot of just pollution, and that can cause those tumors. Um, if you guys follow the Sea Turtle Hospital in Marathon, they get a lot of sea turtle patients with that tumor. Your sea turtles will also be stuck in a lot of nets and fishing line. That's another big issue. Um, you're getting these sea turtles stuck in this stuff because they're very curious. Um, so there's a lot of things that you guys can do to help sea turtles. Um, some of you do like to go on the boat. And if you guys ever do see an injured sea turtle, maybe it has those tumors, maybe it's stuck on a bunch of fishing line or nets, maybe it's not swimming away when you get near it, maybe it's just floating, struggling. Um, before you just try to grab and save it, please make sure you call someone. So wherever you are, make sure you call that um, the closest sea turtle hospital area. Make sure them a call or you can call down 
On here we call FWC. They're a law enforcement group that has boats and they can come help. But make sure you call before you try to rescue the sea turtle because honestly, it might cause more harm to it than good. So always make sure you book a turtle hospital nearby um, or someone like that before you just try to help the sea turtle because you don't want to hurt it more. Um, down here, we have the Sea Turtle Hospital and FWC and the Coast Guard that will actually come out and do turtle rest for us. So guys, I hope you guys got to post something that you guys can do to help sea turtles. Um, some things that I do to help sea turtles, I have a reusable water bottle. I also have no straws. I try to use reusable shopping bags. Um, when I'm out on the boat, I am making sure that I am looking out for sea turtles so I don't run them over. That's a very common thing that happens too a lot of boats will run over sea turtles and that can be easily avoided by just paying attention all right so we're going to move on to this little worksheet very quickly and i'm going to explain it to you so i have a little bit of a show and tell for you guys so right here is what we call a carapace remember that sea turtle carapace shell there we go all right, so this is real. Um, we got this donated to us um, from a museum, actually from the US Fish and Wildlife. And so we did not kill the sea turtle for this. I, I do not know how it died, um, but this is very cool um, to help you guys learn. So this is actually a green sea turtle carapace. Let's do a green sea turtle. And one way to tell the difference between different species is by counting these scoots or these puzzle pieces. So if you guys can see, you can actually count the scoots to decide what species it is. And that actually will go on with this worksheet here. So you'll count the side scoots. So I'll do this one over here. So the green sea turtle has four side scoots. So one, two, three, four. So the green sea turtle has four side scoots here. And the green sea turtle has two big scoots on its on its head so i will show you a photo of that so you guys see here the green sea turtle has here we go green sea turtle has two large scoots on its head and four scoots on the side so go ahead if you have this worksheet if you don't that's fine go ahead and find the sea turtle that's got two big scoots on the front and then four on the side. Which one has both of those? All right. So guys, again, this is the green sea turtle carapace shell. Uh, one fun fact about sea turtles is that they cannot actually hide in their shell. So a lot of turtles will hide in their shell when they're scared. Sea turtles cannot do that. Um, they are kind of attached. Right here, you can actually see their spine is fused to their carapace shell. So you guys see that? They cannot shrink into their shell for protection um, to hide. So instead, if a sea turtle is scared, it'll just swim away very quickly. All right, guys, so your loggerhead sea turtle will actually have five scoots down the side. So they have a longer carapace. So again, your loggerhead has five scoots on the side, and this might be hard to see, so we're gonna try it. I couldn't really get a good photo of this. But they have four scoots on the top of their head. So they have the four patterns on their head. Um, again, guys, it's kind of hard to see, but all you have to know is that they have five down the side, um, five scoots down the side, and four on the top of their head. So find the sea turtle that has the four on the head. All right, see which one has four on the head and which one has five down the side. All right, see which one might be. Finally, your hawksbill. Remember I mentioned that the hawksbill has the jagged carapace shell. So, and those scoots overlap more. So you guys see here, which one has the jagged carapace or the more pointy ones? And the hawksbill has a pointed a more pointed face, remember that beak-like mouth, and it has four scoots on the top of its head. So which one would that be? Go ahead and make your guesses. Um, you can check your answers on our blog. All these sea turtles are amazing animals and they're so important 
to our oceans. Um, thank you guys for all tuning in.